Hey guys, Kyle Bascom here. Today we're going to be looking at the suspension and braking systems on the Mercedes W211. Today we're going to be looking at my personal W211, which is a 2008 E63 AMG. But what we discuss pertaining to the brake and suspension systems on these models is also going to be applicable to the E55 AMG and the CLS models. So the uh, as early as 2006 to 2011 CLS 55 and 63 models. Uh, we're gonna go over all of the components of the brake and suspension system, talk about some of the common failures, uh, some ways that you can make the system a little bit more reliable, or if you're looking to even do some mild modifications, we're gonna touch that as well. I've got a lot in front of me right now. All of the components that are on this table we are gonna to be touching on in the video. I've got a myriad of brake options that you can consider for the car. And although all of these vehicles were equipped with air suspension, we'll touch on some of the steel suspension performance stuff that we have from Bilstein. And we'll talk about these performance brake pads that we have on the table as well. So now that you know what we're going into today, let's go over to the car and get started. We're gonna start things off um, relatively simple here, just looking at the brake system. These vehicles were equipped from the factory with a 360 millimeter six piston Brembo setup. So something like what you see on this table here. This vehicle, my personal vehicle, is normally used to test various products. So right now I've got the one piece, the E55 rotors on there, which is a popular uh, retrofit. But you could also use the 212 or 213 uh, two piece rotors that are pinned instead of bolted on. So basically anything from pre-face lift 211 all the way up to 213 fits. Uh, there are some caveats to that. Kyle, what happened? Uh, I said the 213 brake disc fits. It doesn't. Um, pre-face lift 211, face lift 211, 212, it all fits. 213, it doesn't. I'm sorry. But in terms of compatibility, that's what fits. For brake pads, You've got various options available to you on the website from a daily driver pad like the factory pad. It's a fantastic option. Very good cold bite, very good bite in general, zero noise. This is a good pad. So this pad that I have in my hand is also um, a Brembo pad. It's actually manufactured by Jared, but it's a Brembo band, a branded pad. But we also offer like your DS 2500s, like your Ferrotos if you're going to the track or I've got the EBC Blue Stuff pad here. Those are all options that we offer um, that are compatible with these vehicles. In terms of diagnostics, if you've got noise, pulsation, any of that, you want to address it immediately. Typically noise, you want to start looking at the condition of the rotor. Make sure that you don't have a lip on the inner or outer edge and the thickness of the brake pad. Start there. If the pad friction is thinner than the backing plate, if you need something as a reference for how thick it should be, if it's thinner than the backing plate, it's probably time to get rid of it. If the light has gone off on the instrument cluster for brake wear, it's time to replace it. If you check your brake master cylinder, the, the brake master reservoir, and the fluid level is low, pads are probably low, time to replace it as well. When you replace the pads, take a good look at the, the caliper hardware as well. If the hardware is severely corroded or scored, the pads are not gonna move back and forth properly and you're gonna have terrible brake feel and irregular brake wear. Last thing that you wanna look into in terms of if you have a long pedal, if your wheel bearings are worn and that, uh, that rotor's kind of wiggling around, you're gonna have a long pedal. So you'll have the braking performance, but you're gonna have to really get in there to, to, to get that braking performance. So that's another thing to look at out for. And sometimes what you can do is just kind of hold the rotor right here with the, uh, with the caliper off. You can hold it here, wiggle it, uh, wiggle it this way as well, and you'll be able to feel if there's play in the wheel bearing. Obviously, in terms of other wheel bearing troubleshooting, if you're going left and, and you, know, you get that howling noise as an example, wheel bearings are probably on the way out. Last thing I wanna to touch on, I know at the beginning of the video, we talked about performance modifications. In addition to the factory size 360 millimeter rotors, if you look at like a CLS model, for instance, 06 CLSs that were performance pack had 380 millimeter rotors, 09 to 2011 CLSs had 390 millimeter rotors. Very easy uh, retrofit on these cars. Um, as long as you get the brake caliper from those models, everything is plug and play. Last thing you wanna keep in mind, if you're gonna run a 380 or a 390 upgrade, you are going to need to be at minimum on a 19 inch wheel 
or an 18 inch wheel aftermarket with enough barrel space because the factory barrel has barely any clearance for the 360, 380 is absolutely not fitting on there. All right, so now that we've talked about modifications um, and the standard brake system, we're gonna jump right into suspension. Okay, so um, as it pertains to the suspension, we're kind of just going to start at the top and work our way down. The 211s came with a double wishbone suspension, so upper control arm, two lower control arms. All of your AMG models came equipped with airmatic suspension, so your 55 and 63 AMGs. And you know what? Let's just start with the air suspension. One of the things that is very common on a vehicle with higher miles is to come out and see one corner of the vehicle uh, much lower than the other. Anytime you're dealing with that situation, the most common culprit is going to be either your air strut, if we're talking about the front, or you'll see when we get to the rear, your air spring. This air strut is a full assembly which contains the solenoid, which allows the computer to send air into the strut or release air. You have your strut mount up top. So if you get a knocking noise in the suspension while driving and it's not, it doesn't feel well damped, that's gonna be your strut assembly, so that's a very common question. What's that knocking noise in my suspension? That's this guy. Uh, and then you have a monotube shock absorber with your solenoid over here for your various suspension settings, your Sport 1, your Sport 2 valving. And then when, when the uh, computer's having trouble talking to the strut assembly, it'll just lock it out. So if you're riding really hard, there could be a communication issue and you're just in hard mode, we'll call it. While we're looking at stuff up here, um, if you're higher than you should be on one corner, like significantly higher, maybe take a look at the linkage for your uh, level sensor. So you've got the physical electrical level sensor over here, and you've got the linkage with the two ball joints. Make sure that everything still moves around and that it is connected. So if it pops off or anything like that, you're gonna have funky ride height. In terms of the upper control arm, it's kind of a two-piece deal where you have the connection for your level sensor, you have your ball joint, which is replaceable, and then the bushings towards the frame of the vehicle. Ball joints look like this, three bolts that are retaining it, and you just pull it out. Um, you're probably gonna replace your ball joints twice before you have to replace your upper control arm, which is something to keep in mind. In reference to the air suspension, the last two things that I wanna touch on are your suspension compressor and your valve block assembly. If the vehicle is laboring uh, to get up to ride height, or you've gotten to the point where you have error codes in your air suspension for long recovery time, long filling time, things of that nature, it's probably time to replace that guy. What I typically recommend is replace your suspension compressor. This guy has a filter assembly that's attached to it as well. Make sure you replace the filter because that's going to aid in making sure you don't get debris or excess moisture in the system. And if you're higher mileage, replace the valve block as well. Now, the valve blocks are not as common a failure item as later gen cars or like 164s and, and uh, your 212s and stuff like that. But this is a fully aluminum assembly. And if you have moisture in the system, you're going to start to get the oxidation. It's not going to seal as well as it should. This is a, fair, a fairly simple piece, but if you're throwing a compressor at the car, great time to change the valve block as well, uh, especially if it's the first time the car is getting a compressor. Uh, the last thing I recommend, the compressor rides on these rubber feet um, just so it doesn't transmit noise into the cabin. Get a couple of hardware kits, replace the rubber feet at the same time. So now that we've talked about those components, I'm going to get the car a little higher in the air and we'll look at the lower control arms and the end links and, and those components. All right, so car's up in the air, obviously. Uh, we're on the passenger side of the vehicle. Just going to point out some things to look out for. But before we do any of that, we'll go over the components in the system. This is your lower control arm, spring control arm, camber control arm. You might hear any of those terms. They're referring to this guy right here. This control arm attaches to the knuckle through this ball joint. It attaches to the sway bar over here with another ball joint. This strut, ear strut assembly attaches here, and it attaches to the subframe here. Best course of action with this guy is just to replace the entire arm. However, the bushings are available separately. So if you need this bushing at the subframe, uh, this one at the strut or the ball joint uh, for the end link. We offer all of those on the site. Squeaking noises going over bumps, probably need to do the sway bar end link. Clunking noises going over bumps, like a lighter clunk, you probably need this lower ball joint. If you take a look at this arm, this is the next control arm to make up that sort of double wishbone system. Uh, this is gonna be your caster control arm. It might be called your tension strut sometimes. And what you'll notice on this vehicle is that we have the synchro design control arms, which are a fully articulating uh, monoball setup. So it's fantastic for steering feel. What do you give up? Caster adjustability. So if you go to get your car aligned, 
caster's kind of funky, uh, which normally isn't the case on these, but if it is, just keep in mind, you have no caster adjustability. Uh, when I refer to like caster or camber adjustability, the factory gives you a minute amount of um, adjustment and the way they do it is uh, the hole for your control arm is oval and it's grooved and the groove matches up with a grooved bolt. But that is how you get your camber adjustability here or caster adjustability here. Uh, so just keep in mind, like I said, you lose the caster adjustability when you upgrade. All right, other things to look out for when you're inspecting the suspension. Obviously, you're gonna look at the condition of the uh, rubber bushings. So if you're seeing cracking, if you're seeing like a gold color on the bushings, that means that water's had time to play around and sit there and kind of degrade the rubber. If you see, like I'm showing in this case, if the boots split, and there's evidence of dust around the boot, that means that the grease for the joint is kind of walking its way out. And what's walking its way in? Everything from the outside and it's eroding the joint. These Lemforder or like genuine style uh, control arms, they do have a polymer cup instead of a metal cup. So they are a little bit more resilient. The metal, it just gouges out and then you get the play immediately. They're a little more resilient, but the bottom line is, when you see that, it is probably a good idea to replace the control arms. Don't just do one, do both. Factory style or uh, the upgraded style that we offer. It's all on the website. While you're in this area, although it's not the, the subject matter that we're going over today, just glance at the boots and the tie rods as well, just to make sure that they don't need to be replaced. And then lastly, I won't physically do it on the tire, but like hold the tire, uh, rotate it back and forth this way, up and down this way to determine if there's excess play in your suspension. Could be from your joints, or like I mentioned when uh, we discussed brakes, could be the, the wheel bearings as well. So to check everything thoroughly, you know, wiggle that back and forth as well. So now that we've discussed the, we'll call it like the factory style suspension, I'm gonna take a moment to show you an option that is available to you if you're looking to get away from Airmatic. So Airmatic is fantastic when it's working and it's fairly reliable. But as these cars age, you might want to consider an upgrade that suits your needs a little bit better than Airmatic does. And one option that we offer uh, is a coilover suspension system. So we offer them from BC. The one I've got here is a PSS system from Bilstein. Uh, and it allows you the height adjustability. So you still get the height adjustability the same way you would with Airmatic, except now instead of it being electronically controlled, you have to, to uh, control the ride height using this threaded section of the, the shock body. You do get adjustment for your damping, which is fantastic. But in terms of putting a system on a vehicle like this, what does it require? You're gonna wanna use some of the components from the steel suspension vehicles. So you will need an upper shock tower mount. Uh, we offer those as part of the kit on the website. And in the rear, you will need the control arm from a steel suspension car, like, like a, a six cylinder facelift car. So when we get back there, I'll show you the Airmatic control arm and we'll link to the correct steel suspension style control arm on the website. But yeah, if you're looking to modify the vehicle, we do have coilover options available. Uh, you could also leverage just the stock components from a steel suspension car. But when you do an apples to apples comparison and you take cost into consideration, it's kind of a good option uh, to just convert to a full coilover system for, in some cases, the same price as just doing two front struts on this vehicle. So something to keep in mind. All right, now that we have reviewed the front suspension on the vehicle, we're gonna go over to the rear and take a look. We are now in the rear of the vehicle. What components make up the system? We've got our air spring over here. Uh, it's a divorced spring and shock setup in the rear. So you got your shock absorber here. This is the Airmatic style uh, control arm that I was referring to earlier. So as you can see, there's no spring bucket in it. And that's why if you wanna do a steel suspension, you need to convert the control arm. But this is your control arm for your air spring. This is going to be your tow control link. This is the only component on the rear suspension that is shared with non-AMG models. Every other suspension component in the system, it's a five link rear system, uses the control arms from the uh, protection package cars, the, 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 the Z06 option code. So what, what does that mean? It means that every bushing and, and ball joint that takes hardware in the system uses an M14 or larger hardware than standard. It also means that the options that you have in the aftermarket to correct camber using the upper control arms are not available for this vehicle because they use that non-standard size. Uh, later cars like 212s and 204s and stuff like that, they went back to the M12 hardware and everyone kind of uses the same links regardless, but 211s are funky like that. So just something to keep in mind. If you're lowering the vehicle and trying to prepare for a camber correction and tow correction options, 
there are aftermarket adjustable arms available. Unfortunately, it is not an item that we offer, but it is something to keep in mind. So if you're gonna lower it uh, and you don't wanna deal with it regular inside tire wear, just keep in mind, it's, it's not standard. So your five link consists of your toe control link, which I talked about already. We've got a link here. We've got two links up here. One of them is your camber control arm. Uh, and then what you wanna look out for is a couple of things. In terms of drivability, you lay the hammer down, the car feels like it's steering itself, could mean that you have wear in one of the bushings in the system and you're getting irregular toe as a result of that. So that's something to keep in mind. If the car is kind of steering itself under power, take a look at your control arms. If you're getting squeaking noises as you're going through your uh, suspension travel, also check your control arm bushings. In terms of replacing the bushings, bushings are available, especially on the, on the subframe side. We recommend replacing the control arm. Reason being, although the bushing on the subframe side is available and replaceable, at the knuckle side, it's not. So do each of the control arms. We have a full five-piece kit on the site. Something to keep in mind when you're dealing with the rear suspension, especially the upper arms, that subframe's gotta come down a little bit. Uh, if you wanna get clever, sure, you can cut the head off bolts and, and walk it off and all this stuff, but leave some space in your heart for needing to lower your subframe to do your control arms. That's gonna be the right way and that's gonna be the way that gives you the least headache as you're going through the system. Now, in terms of items that are common failure points, this guy right here, your, your ear spring. There are a couple of different ways that it can fail, but the two most common ways are gonna be your ear bladder in here, developing like micro cracks and things like that, and you'll notice that your suspension is dropping at night, or you've got your reservoir tank for your ear spring. So you go ear spring, there is a rubber hose that comes to your reservoir tank right here. It is common for this to leak as well and cause the suspension ride height to droop. So what are your options? You can go the route of a genuine air spring. What's starting to happen in the market is the Bilstein supply chain is drying up for this specific component. You can still get it through the dealer. It's still reasonably priced. It is only available as a remanufactured unit at this point. So you are gonna have to take your old unit, send it back to us to get your core deposit back. Another option, r not has a specific part number for uh, the AMG models. Uh, it does eliminate this reservoir, so the ride quality may change uh, slightly. It might be a little bit firmer. It eliminates another potential failure item. So there are some positives in going the r not route. And then lastly, something that you might not feel, but it is degrading as the vehicle ages, is gonna be your shock absorber. Your shock absorber offers variable damping through the button in the cabin. If you're talking about a sedan, you're gonna have the monotube shock absorber with the solenoid for adjusting the damping. If we're talking about wagons, they're also going to have that additional reservoir to deal with you know, the suspension travel and the load and everything else. Uh, but outside of that, same basic component. If you're replacing a shock absorber on a wagon, it is going to require a special tool in order to remove the shock absorber. So before you attack that project, definitely something you wanna look into. We'll leave the part number in the description for that product as well. Now that we've touched on all of the common failure items in the suspension, we'll go back to the table and wrap things up. But we hope that the information that you found here today was quite helpful, but of course, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.